like this kitten, this kitten, you know what he did the other day? My husband, because they sleep out here at night, because there's a heater, he let them in. And this little one goes right up to my door and meows at it. Starts meowing at my door. I get up, I open the door. She's sitting there. Tormund's right next to her, sitting there. And he's just looking up like, hey. And she's like climbing on me like she's hungry, so. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Today is episode 57. And this is either going to be December finished objects or like a wrap up of 2021 finished objects. I'm not sure if I'm going to split them into two episodes or just do one. I think I'm really going to try to just do one. So we might go over an hour. So if you want to stop after December and you don't want to see my recap, uh, let's just do that. 2020, do both. If you don't want to see the end of the year wrap up, you can just stop watching whenever you feel like it. You could stop right now <laughs> if it's already <laughs> too much of a train wreck for you. Um, today I have a finished object. I have, uh, I might have one whip. We have an update on the sweater situation and um, uh, my something I'm going to be casting on a two day. Um, and a short change of plans for uh, next month's project. Um, and I have some luxurious squishy mail for you today. So um, I don't think I have any updates for you for anything. Nothing's happening because it's, you know, there's a Brienne. That's like a sack. It's a pet sack that has like furry uh, material inside. Uh, but they've made it like, they've just opened the opening so it's like a nest. <laughs> they don't like go in it. Um, and we're getting a new foster on a Saturday. We're getting a Chihuahua. I don't know which one and you guys, this is bad because usually when I get uh, fosters, they get like, usually they get in more than one dog at a time. Very rarely do they get one dog at a time. Like maybe like if the sh if a shelter calls the rescue, because um, I work with a, a small breed rescue. They rescue dogs under 25 pounds um, because I don't have the room for like a 60 pound, another 60 pound dog in this house. And Ripley, my big girl, is terrified of dogs that are like bigger than like... 20 pounds <laughs> so <laughs> we stay on the low end because she really is afraid of bigger dogs I don't know why anything bigger than she was as a puppy I think it, she is afraid of and she was like 18 pounds as a puppy so uh, oh oh my god she moved already she's so fast um so okay she sent me pictures of there's four chihuahuas that are being rescued from I don't know where they came from um and one of them, you guys, one of them looks like one of my dogs that died like seven years ago, eight years ago. How long ago now? In 2014, two of my dogs died. I had two litter mates and one was Tan. Kampa, you remember I told you this uh, the, other, the other episode. Kampa was my buddy. I call him my soul dog. He's like my soulmate, but in dog form. And this dog looks just like him has the coloring except his nose this dog's nose is black and Kampa's nose was red he had like a reddish pink pinky purpley nose you know what I mean I think they call them reds um, like pit bulls typically have that reddish nose so he had like a redder purpley nose um, and this one has a black nose but the color the, he has a fawn you know tannish fawn coloring so i'm dying and she's bringing them all to me and i get to pick which one i want so as much as i want to because i cannot foster fail with a chihuahua right now even though that is like my end goal is to have a chihuahua army we can't in this house in this city you can only have three dogs and we have our three dogs so um I don't know what I'm going to do because I feel like if he looks too much like Kampa, 
I'm either going to want him or it's going to be best if I say no and I pick a different dog. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> anyway, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to play by ear and see what I think when it happens. Sorry, my hair's still wet. It looks a little gross, but whatever. Um, okay, so let's get into things <laughs> before I overthink picking out a foster dog. Anyway, um, I am wearing the Bonjour from S. Espes Trico, which um, we're going to go over in a little bit when we go over um, December finished objects. So I'm just not going to talk about it right now, but we'll talk about it in a minute. Um, so we're going to go over our whips and I'm going to start with the sweater because if you remember last time I told you I was going to switch to the bigger uh, top part and work the sleeves from there and I did and the sleeves are okay but they're not as big as I wanted them to be and they're not shaped the way I wanted them to be so I've decided to frog this entire <laughs> this entire project is getting frogged it just has the sleeves I was just about to start the um the cuffs um, and I just don't like how the sleeves fit. Like they're skin tight, t skin tight. And that's not what I wanted. I wanted some, and I know I'm going to get a little bit more when I block, but right up here in the armpit, man, it is so tight that I'm just like, no, we're not doing it. So instead I had found another one from Keynes, I think Keynes and Co. Um, that had the exact same stitch count, but a different row count. Um, so I'm going to actually do that one, I think. And, um, and that also is a, I think it, the smallest size is a 38. So I'm just going to do the smallest size because if it's 38, that's going to give me three inches, at least in the bust. So... I don't know how much bigger it'll be everywhere else, um, but I am. That's where I've landed on doing. I don't know what's called. I'll tell you when I start it. But um, that's what I where I've. It was weird because I had that a tab opens on my Chromebook, and I was look I was looking through Ravelry again, and I'm like, Ugh, none of these look like what I want. And then I came across that one in Ravelry. I'm like, wait a minute. I already have this open in this tab right here so I flipped over the tab and I was like okay yeah this is the one I have planned on if if this doesn't work out try this one so we are going to try that however not next month because we're doing the cape thing which I also have an update I want to talk to you about that a little bit too so my other since I finished the cape early, I only had this and the sweater. Since the sweater wasn't working out, I had to cast on something else. So I cast on the top with the Tweety Sheep that we were going to do, remember? Here's the thing, though. I've already started the second ball, and I've got literally like 20 rounds here, and we're supposed to have 100. So we're not. this is not have enough yardage to make a top, so this is also getting frogged. Um, I don't know what this will be. Maybe hats? Maybe hats? Maybe a hat. It could be a hat. It could be a hat. It could be a double layered hat. Um, that's probably what I'll do. So anyway, so, okay, so that's on my whips. We don't have any whips. Do you want to know what my ne next whip is going to be? Should we do that before we go into finished projects? It, okay, so this is going to be my new cast on. Um... If I can find it. Okay. So I really liked this. There are a few things I didn't like about it, um, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. So um, I had this uh, mohair from Houghton at Yarn. It is called Wine That Stains. And it is black and burgundy it I, I mean I can't even tell you how it's dyed it's so some of its black some of its burgundy 
So it's darker burgundy. I absolutely have been, I've been, this is like the first uh, mohair skein that I bought. Because we all know I love burgundy, right? So um, I'm just in love with this. So this is 72% um, kid mohair and 28% silk, 459 yards, 50 grams. And to go with it, I just dyed some um, platinum sock, 4%. Darmus True Black. It's already got fuzz on it. Okay, so I'm going to remake this with these. It's so dark you can't see. With these two. Um, so it'll be a little bit different. Because um, it's going to be black and then all you'll see is the this part of the where it is burgundy. Um, so I'm going to start this right away like when I'm done recording, I'm going to, because I already um, mocked up a pattern. I like took like three patterns and like combined the shaping and then worked out my stitch counts to match this because I like the size of this. This is, I like the size of this, like in my arms. I like the size of it. And I like the length I got was pretty good. I wanted it to my elbow and it's a little bit past my elbow, so it's fine. Um, and I had some leftover, so um, I'm going to cast this on right away and start it. Because, and the reason I'm doing that is because, you know, our next, our next, our next, um, next month's project is that capelet that I'm making out of the chunk. That is going to have the sleeves, you know, the separation for the sleeves or for slits for sleeve for armholes. And I decided that we're going to do that entire thing in the round. And that's what I'm remaking this to look more like that. Um, and I'm going to do the thing completely in the round. And I'm going to stick the armholes and I'm going to leave the whole thing together. Because I was thinking like, you're going to have those flaps on either side in the middle. And that just felt weird. So I'm like, what if I just have where my arms can come out and the rest is just there like do I want flap so I'm kind of going on steak or don't steak because I found out you can steak with a crochet hook with you with crocheting you can do your steak like that and so since I am a more adept at crochet than knit I was like okay let's do that um so I'm still, so I'm going to see what this does and then I'm going to, like, I feel like if I do this first, I'll be better prepared to do the chonk cape uh, with the sleeve slits. Um, and this only took like a week last time. So I think um, now that I know what I'm doing, it might um, be fine. Okay, so this I'm casting on immediately. Okay, so. What's next? Okay, so our December, 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 sorry, December. <laughs> My grandma was here for a minute. Um, okay, for December finished objects, we have uh, the double layer hat that I made for my husband that had some of the resist from the dye. Okay, so that's one give that back to him. The other was um, this top with ha that had alpaca in it. And I got to tell you guys, I don't know what's going on. I am frogging this <laughs> and I'm going to make one of these out of it. Not right the second, but uh, because this has, I have two of these and it's 440 yards total. It's the same as this. So I'm just going to do this on these needles with the new thing. Um, and I was looking at the makeup of the other um, alpaca tops that I have made that fit because that thing just does not fit. It, it just does not want to not stretch. It just keeps stretching and stretching and stretching. So I was curious, like, why my other, um, why my other shirts made with alpaca? Uh, did not stretch. So I'm trying to figure out how I know if this one can be made with it or not. So this is the sleek, Odin will sleek. 
And this had 55% fine merino, 30% baby alpaca, and 15% mulberry silk. So I'm looking at other ones that I made. Um, what was different? And I don't even know because I have this plied one, which is the, the base I'm wearing right now is a DK base. And its fiber content is 50% alpaca, 30% wool, and 20% polyamide. Polymid, poly, polymid, nylon, basically. Okay, so is it the nylon? I don't know. I don't know. This is plied, and I, I mean, that's plied too, but I don't know. And so I was looking at the other ones. So then the ones with the chainette was 48% merino, 32% cotton, and 20% alpaca. So because that was a chainette, it's like an I-cord, basically. That's probably why I didn't stretch. Um, and then... My other one was a worsted, which was this same ex is this what I'm looking at? I'm looking at this. What was my other one? Aaron. Here's the Aaron. 40% merino, 30% silk, and 30% alpaca. So I can't figure out what it is. <laughs> that one works fine. Is it because it has 30% silk? I don't know because they all have like 30% alpaca. <laughs> I don't understand. So I don't know. I have no idea. Anyway, <clears throat> remember, this was worsted. We worked at a DK. And it just keeps, keeps stretching, stretching, stretching. Um, and I can't wear it as a top. Like, these straps <laughs> just keep stretching. And, like, how I, how I decide whether these fit or not is I wear them to bed. And if... I don't fall out of them during the night, then they fit. And I was falling out of this. So if I fall out of it, there's no, I'm not going to wear it, obviously, out in the, you know, public where I can fall out of my top. So I decided I'm going to redo this as the redone this. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's talk about the Espes Trico Bonjour. Um... <clears throat> I really, really like this. It was super fun to knit. Um, I did drop a few. Um, I've got some light bulb mar stitch markers. I don't know what to call those. Um, I have a couple of them because I dropped some stitches. <laughs> like I said before, it was really hard to tell if my needle was picking up that uh, the mohair or not. Um, and I, I missed one and I didn't want to tack them down and I also did not cut off the edges yet because uh, when I figure out how I'm going to redo this, I'm going to redo this one too. Um, and I do like it um, as a cowl. It looks kind of a bit of, you know, a part of the female anatomy that <laughs> it's just kind of funny. But I do like how it fits, like just as, if you're just going to wear it as a cowl, if you're going to wear it up, it still covers the back a bit. You know, it comes down on your back a little bit because of the, um, the ribbing and it lays flat. So that's nice. And I love how I'm, it's like an instant warm and I can still move. I can still move my arms, you know, and it doesn't, um, it comes back down too. It doesn't really do anything. Now, the problem I have with this is solely in the neckline. I don't like this curl over. Now, I don't know how much you can see because of the darkness, but it just curls over. Um, and it's like on the mannequin, it looks great in the picture. It like comes up in the back and then drops down in the bottom but stays flat. Mine is not mine rolls and I blocked it pretty hardcore. Like it's rolling down the back. So my neck is not my neck is not very warm. Um, so what I wanted to do is do a bit of a mock neck, a short mock neck to keep it. And what I actually did was I counted out uh, this ribbing to go here. Um, so I'm going to start with a, a loose ribbing here, make sure it can come over my head, 
and then it's going to be maybe four inches. I don't know, I have to measure. I have to measure how much I want. And then I'm redoing the increases from here to work to the shoulder and then get bigger increases at the shoulder so it can drop from the shoulder. But I didn't want it to be like baggy up around here. And I'm not sure if this, I can't find where this ends because you actually work this for six and a half inches. So, but that's going to be farther up on my neck and I didn't want it bulging out. So I'm going to go slower with the increases um, around the neck coming out there. I was going to do raglans, but then I'm like, I don't really want that look. So I'm going to do six, um, six stitches along every other, every other round, I think, until I get to here. And then we'll just do like double that up and do 12, 12, 12. Uh, until we hit the, the what I wanted here and then just go straight because a lot of this is straight because um, I did so much more um, and then I had I had a bunch left over um, I had this much left over of the merino which was 9.73 no 2.14 and 9.73 of the mohair, which was, they're the same yardage. <laughs> so you think that would be, but I mean, the wool was stretchier than the mohair. So I don't know. I never worked with mohair before, so what do I know? Um, so that's my problems with this. I mean, if you don't mind the curling neck and, um, it's just my neck is cold and I got this specifically so my neck would not be cold. <laughs> so it's not doing its job because <laughs> my neck is cold. Um, so I want to do that, do that. And then, um, you know, work out a little more. And then, um, I could do the same, um, because it's on size fives. I could do that with this could be done on a size five because I did this on a size DK, that's a 3.5. I did this on a 3.5. So this could be done on a 5. That's totally fine. Like I said before, I am planning to get some alpaca, Surrey alpaca, to work with uh, along with the kid mohair, but wool to die for. Uh, it doesn't have any in stock. And um, I think a a Andy last said we're not getting any new containers until February. And he also said they're upping their price to an extra $150 a kilo, which is fine. I'd, their price, they're they're getting gouged with this. Um, what do you call it? The shipping, the shipping charges because everything's uh, you know backed up and everything. So I I'm, I have no problem paying extra. If I was like one fifty, same kind of load me, I'd pay more than that. But that's that's fine. So <laughs> um, I'm waiting for them to get some Surrey alpaca in and then I'm going to get a bag of each and then we're going to have some fun. But I have some stuff to play with um, in the meantime. Um, so that brings us to Squishy Mail. Before I say Squishy Mail, I want to say we did three, yeah, three projects this month. A cowl, double air hat, and the tub. <laughs> so only three, but that's okay because... You know, I was hoping we'd finish strong, but still <laughs> no knit sweater this year. Okay, so squishy mail. <coughs> this squishy mail comes to, did I bring the, from, um, our own is in pearls. I blame her for this because this is. Hill Country Weavers, and I'm actually going to tell you what I paid for this. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Okay, so if you watch our own, it's the pearls. She just has shown this yarn a couple times, and first of all, look at how nicely it comes packed. They have like, look at this. It's like embossed. Oh my god, it looks so nice. I mean, I don't package my stuff in plastic. I package my stuff in paper, but. I really like this sticker thing going on. Um, 
So it comes packaged like this. I did open one. Guys, I said I wasn't gonna, but I could not help myself. I couldn't help myself. And look what they give you. This is like the cutest thing I've ever seen. Naturally Hill Country Weavers, because that's their thing is the naturally, th these aren't dyed. Um, a maker's journal. And it is just, it's cardboard and then unlined paper. It's dotted though. It's got little dots you won't be able to see. Can you see? No. It's not exactly graph paper, but it's got little dots. So, oh my god, it's just so, oh my god, I love it. I love it. This is so cute. Um, so I got, hold on, let me open this one. The first thing I got was on, I think it was clearance. They were clearing it out. And they were $18. So I said, yes, please. Um, and like I said, it's undyed, so I can dye this. This is um, Hill Country Weavers Kaylee's Twist. Ooh, it's originally $35, so I got it for $18. Color is Stonewall. It is 55% merino, 35% Texas mohair, and 10% tensile. 330 yards to 115 grams. Um, I have no idea what I was going to make with this. I it, it didn't really give a lot of options. I wasn't quite sure what it was going to feel like. I really, it's really soft. <laughs> um, so I don't know what I'm going to make with this, but it's going to be something. And, um, yeah, maybe one of these, who knows? I mean, I could, it's plenty, plenty, 330 yards. That's six. Cause I'm trying to go between this and the cape I'm making to where, where you are in your yardage. If you can slip for sleeves or if this just keeps going. Cause this yardage is what for, 37 and I didn't even use all of it. Okay, so anyway, I also got this I I had talked about before and I wanted to get it in silver, but they didn't have any silver. So this is ACL. ACL, a pack of cashmere love. And this is an ivory. Oh my god, is that just gonna blow out? The lighting in, in here is so ridiculous because it's so bright and then it's so dark. It's just because I was watching my earlier ones because I was going through all the dye projects and it's so bright in here and I'm like, <laughs> it's winter, there's no sun. Okay, so this is 70% baby alpaca, 20% silk, and 10% cashmere, 437 yards, 100 grams. Um, this definitely is going to be something like this. I'm feeling it. I am feeling it. Like I'm thinking because we have two, we might be able to do the split, uh, slit, um, arm cape thing that I'm wanting to. And I'm thinking we could also, um, you know, get some a uh, Surrey alpaca and add to this. And I think that would be gorgeous. And because it's ivory, I'm going to do an over color one. So I'm trying, <laughs> I try to decide if I would just want to do black, 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 which I do. <laughs> or if I want to do like just the mohair black, I mean, or the Surrey alpaca black or this black and then do the other one a color, like do one black and then do one a color or do one a variegated and the other one black. Anyway, since the Surrey alpaca is not in stock yet, this is going to be a dye project later down the road. I really want this for next year. Really, really bad. This is so soft. Like RO wasn't lying. This is, and you guys, this is only $29.50. $29.50 for baby, it's baby alpaca, 70% baby alpaca, 10%, 20%. So let me try this again. ACL, Hill Country Weavers, ACL, 
alpaca cashmere love. 70% baby alpaca, 20% silk, 10% cashmere, $29.50. If you buy into yarn like I do, you're going to pay about $30 a skein. So to get baby alpaca, silk, and cashmere for $29.50 is like a ridiculous. Even if you're not going to dye it and you're going to wear it um, this way. Um, this is one of the softest bases I've ever felt in my life and I want to swim in it. It is so soft. It is so soft. Um, I'm really excited to do this. Very, very, very excited. Okay. Then what I also got. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is a, just a tan. This is camelback. Can you see anything? No, we're just blown out. Camelback. So naturally HCW, I think this is the line of their own yarns that are just naturally, they don't dye them or anything. This is camelback. Uh, they even have lot numbers. We got two of the same lot numbers. Um, that's weird. That they would have lot numbers if they're not dyed. Um, anyway, 50% baby camel, 50% silk, 438 yards, 100 grams. So again, I want to do one of these or the whatever I do with this is going to be done with this. So. I was thinking this would get alpaca and this would get mohair, maybe? I don't know. Do you think? Surrey mohair? Um, what I really feel in this is the silk content. And you know, I'm not that big on silk because the worms die. Um, I'm curious about the baby camel though. I'm curious about how, if it's a, a, if it's a warm fiber, it's a soft, it's a very, it's very <laughs> comparable to the alpaca. The alpaca is a little bit uh, fluffier. There's like a, you're not gonna be able to see. There's a bit of a halo, of course, on the alpaca that is not on the camel. Um, these were $35 a skein. <laughs> and since I didn't uh, buy myself anything for the holidays, I decided that this, was my was my gift to myself for this year if you remember last year i bought myself some dog some dog yarn that i never i haven't used yet because it's also undyed and i'm afraid to dye it and ruin it um so anyway i'm actually gonna put one of these in here i am super excited about this yarn i could not um I could not recommend it enough if you uh, like luxury yarns and you have never heard of them before. Um, this journal is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, so yeah, I got free shipping too, so um, they had a free shipping at the top of their website, so maybe look for that. Does that save me $13? <sighs> Which made me feel a little bit better by <laughs> buying all of that. Uh, for 2021, I wanted to go over um, some of our stats, some of my stats. Our, why do I always do this like plural? It's me. I am the one. I feel like that Snoop Dogg. I would like to thank myself. <laughs> For always believing in me and for doing all the hard work. <laughs> right. Did a lot of work this this year. Okay, so 200, 2021, we did, um, I, cl I looked at the Ravelry and it says we have 61 projects. And I had originally planned on I think four projects a month 
That was my, well, my plan for this year for sure is for, I think we're already planning four projects a month with a stash buster. Well, the stash buster doesn't have to be a separate project. The stash buster can be a die project or a crochet project or what are we doing? <laughs> I forgot, whatever. We're doing, four, we're going to try for four projects a month. So there's a cro die project. We're gonna keep die project going. Crochet project, stash project, and then just one main project. I don't know. I don't know what to call my main project because we do like um. I was gonna do four things, four projects a month. That was gonna be my thing. So this year, 2021, I wanted to complete 48 projects. So that's four each month. So I completed 61. That's 127%. And do you know how mad I am that that's a 61? Because it's an odd number. <laughs> like I'm mad about it. <sighs> I don't know though. It's not going to matter. We could just say it's 60 and I'll delete something. Um, so anyway, <laughs> That's how I am. I hate odd numbers. I hate odd numbers. I hate them so much. I don't know why. It's just a thing. Okay, so in 2021, we did 39 shawls. 39 shawls, you guys. 39. And that's counting the shawlography. 39. And I think I might have frogged some that didn't make it on that list. Um, we did 10 tops. We did, I didn't write it down, four, because I wasn't done. <clears throat> we did 10 tops, 10 of the tops to make. We did 10 of those. We did four double layer hats. Two were cashmere. One was just fingering sock. And the other one was the two skein Aaron. We made two Lola sweaters that match tops. <laughs> And, oh, I have hats in there twice. Well, that's weird. We made one sweater and one pair of shorts. Along with a bunch of other stuff that doesn't matter. So I wanted to go over some of those things and show you. <coughs> um, I want to start with the only sweater <laughs> that, we managed, that I managed to finish. It was the blanket cardigan. Um, by Heart Hook Home that uh, I used way more yardage than it called for and I don't know why. Um, still great and I'm kind of cold in here. <laughs> it's really cold in here. I'm going to put this on because I'm cold. Um, okay, so I don't have another sweater. I don't have any more sweaters. Let's pull this forward. Oh, oh that's better. So I have some finished, uh, I want to show you some tops, we did some tops. Um, Lola sweater matches the top. Um, we also did, uh, we started out the year with the, um, with the Maleficent, uh, all about that brioche. That's my favorite project. Um, then don't forget, um, shellography. I'm getting cold now, shellography. Um, <clears throat> we also had a bunch of dye projects. This was a dye project out of the um, 50 gram balls of, um, well, the Andes. We did a dog sweater and a crop top for me. That was fun. And I have all of our dye projects. We have a January dye project, which is also Hillary. Dye project Hillary. February Hillary. Um, March Hillary. March dye project. Is this April's? 
April's was my favorite, the one quarter color. The one quarter color. Uh, and then May was our three three quarter color, which I still haven't finished and made into the Hiller. I still have to do that. I'll do that eventually. So those are our Dye Project shells, but Dye Project and SF, we kept doing Dye Project because then we did um, Dana and Alinda, Dana, Linda, um, Eleanor, also my Eleanor, my favorite Eleanor. Um, I don't have a Maya because I made one of her and uh, she sold. So she's already gone. But we do have um, remember Hillary, Ruth, Hillary, Ruth, Carrie, and Michelle. So that's so many shawls that we did. I did more than one. I did like four of each of those, remember? Um, so that took up most of our month. And then I wanted to show uh, this was a dye project that we ended up not using yet. This is a DK weight. Um, I think this is a Knit Picks, whatever. They're, God, I just can't. Just it just will not go into a skein. But remember this gorgeous beauty that's going to be Malayla. Yeah, this is still hanging around. So we actually did most of our dye projects into actual projects. So you keep that going. Um I'm really getting cold. <laughs> it's 44 minutes. Um <clears throat> So anyway, um, 66 projects for the year, that's five per, or 60 projects for the year, that's five, um, five projects a month. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. So anyway, um, I've also been uh, planning for all next year. I, you know, I like to plan. I'm getting the, um, I'm just getting everything into one folder instead of having, remember I showed you all those different folders I have last time. I'm going to have my planner. I'm going to have one notebook for my die projects. Um, that is going to be after I, I, because when I'm doing die project, I take notes on like, these little mini legal pads not in a thing like this because it would be trash um and then i put it over into a notebook um well that's what i'm gonna do now because i just had a notebook that i keep on a table that is not my die table and then i walk over and i write down what i did but um that it still is a mess so i'm going to keep a dedicated die book of everything i did and i kept track of and i have it all on here anyway of what i did um, so I'm going to have a die project notebook that's small, and then I'm going to have a big notebook where I keep all my show notes, all my other notebooks in, because it's five subjects, so each section will be one, another one of those things. I'm still keeping this because I do notes as I'm, you can't see, I, this is what I use the most. I am always scribbling in here as I'm working. Um, my um, thoughts of dog uh, calendar, um, what do you call this? Planner. It's a weekly and a monthly planner. So I have monthly and then we're weekly. And then at the back section has notes where I write down um, all of our coming episodes so next episode is uh january die project now we're switching die project days which is not really going to have any effect on you because we still record on wednesday um but last die project since we moved my die table into the house 
is too close to my husband while he's at work. And it, frankly, he was in my way like the whole time. So I decided die project is going to be Saturday and then Sunday if I need any extra, you know, because sometimes I, I, things don't come out as I want them to or there's something I have to fix. Um, so I, I like to have that extra day. So like we had Monday and then Tuesday and then, you know, Wednesday we'd record. So um, like today's Wednesday. So Saturday I'm in the die pots because it's the first. So the first Saturday of the month will be die project and that's going to kind of change our, our um, schedule a little bit, but not in any way that you're going to notice. So don't worry about it. Um, and again, I'm going to keep the die projects um, as their own series. So if you just want to watch the die projects, you're going to see each die project. Everything I die on die project is going to be shown completed in a following die project. So you don't have to go looking around through all my episodes to where you see, I mean, you'll still see them if you're following along all the time, you'll see them when you're, they're completed, but you'll see them again. Like this, my husband's hat that you've seen like 8 billion times. You're going to see it again next week. <laughs> you saw it last week. You saw it this week for end of December. You're going to see it again for die project. <clears throat> so anyway, 60 projects, pat on the back, high five. Um, that's 10 more than last year. Cause I think last year I did 50 and I was like amazed with myself and 60. I'm like, are you crazy? So next year we're going to try to hit 60 again, but I don't know if that's going to happen because already I'm changing January because I've got designs in my head. I don't want to be a designer. You guys, I really don't. It's just, I don't, I don't see things that I want to wear. I don't see things that are what I want to wear. And then I want to make them what I want to wear. You know what I mean? <sighs> what a pain. Do you have a favorite object from, do you have a favorite, um, finished, uh, item from this year? I'm trying to think of what my favorite, was it might just be Hillary you guys it might be January dye project because of what this means because of what this color represents to me who Hillary was to me who the person that this color represents was to me I have just such fond memories of this of this just makes me feel a lot of things. Am I showing it the wrong way? <laughs> but then also, <clears throat> this one's really, 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 really. I love this one too. And then also the brioche. The brioche was like, I, I made this one the first one for a reason because I wanted it so bad. But I'm kind of upset that January seems to be starting off with me designing stuff. I mean, <coughs> I want to make more of these cowls because they're useful and I think I would wear them a lot and I, but I want to make, I want to change the neck because his neck is too open. It's too, it's not warm enough for me. And um, now I know I'm not bothered by the mohair at all. The mohair is not bothering me. I have not been itchy or had um, a rash at all. So I think I'm fine. Um, but it's like, do I start that in preparation for the cape that we're supposed to be making? Or do I just do that other sweater and have a sweater done? That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. So I'm going to start this right now and then... When this is done, I'm going to decide if we're either moving on to the cape or we're going to do that other sweater. Because I need something warmer. I need something warmer. I'm not in focus here. I need something warmer and I don't... <clears throat> but the thing is that the cape, because it's bulky, will not take so long. And a sweater has sleeves. <laughs> it's like bulky won't take too long or sleeves 
<laughs> Plus, I had that idea to steek the slits instead of letting them just have flat, they have that flap in the front. Because I don't know how that, I don't know how that is going to like flop around while I'm wearing it. You know what I mean? Like, do I want it to do that? Like, then, then that means I have to make sure the slits are big enough and, um, not centered, but on the, you know, <clears throat> that the slits are where I need them to be precisely. And I'm not sure about that. So I'm trying to figure out how to be warm while I'm working. It's all for working. So if I'm sitting, maybe it doesn't matter how the bottom is. I don't know. I have no idea. I have nothing left to say. It's the end of the year. The last episode. Um, hello to my 10 viewers. Um, how mad are you about that sweater that I can't get done? <laughs> we tried like, we tried like the, um, right? We tried the Witchling like twice, and then I tried the Zephyr, and then I tried something else, didn't I? And then I tried this. I feel like my brain is just like, just crochet sweaters because you're way better at it. But I can't crochet a, a pullover. I can crochet cardigans all day long. There is another cardigan I want to do, remember? It might do Link DCs with that Barocco Vintage that I hate. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Hey, we could do that instead of the blanket. I have no idea what's happening in January. I'm going to have to figure out what I want to do. I don't know, guys. I, I don't know. I'm the only one here, and I make all the decisions, and I am not a good decision maker half the time. Once again, my earrings are from... Black Magic Jewelry on Etsy. Um, these are bats. I love them. Um, I love big giant earrings and I love bats and Halloween and gothy things and she's fantastic and I love her. I love her shop. And this is still that order that I got a while ago that I got like one of everything. <laughs> Not everything, but close. <laughs> I got a lot of stuff. Um, anyway, who do we have? Hill Country Weavers. Gorgeous yarn. Gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. Um, I don't think I have anything left to say. This is going to be out on Friday, right? Isn't that... Um, Friday is the... Yeah, Friday is uh, New Year's Eve, so Happy New Year's Eve, everybody, and Happy New Year, and I don't celebrate New Year either, so I don't celebrate much of anything ever, because <laughs> I was going to say something really dark and depressing, and then I was like, don't do that. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you uh, had a relaxing time. Um, I know my energy is not that great right now and you know what? I woke up today and got out of bed, so it's a win. Um, so if you need extra, you know, whatever you need to get through this winter time, which is awful for me, I hate winters, I hate them so much, um, do what you have to do to get through it, even if it's sitting on your couch and knitting, because that's how I'm handling it, is sitting and knitting. That's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. So you do whatever you need to do to make it through this, because especially in the middle of a pandemic, this has got to be hard for everybody. I can guarantee you everybody's having a hard time right now. So you're not alone in how hard this is. It's hard. It's hard. And who knows when? Who knows when? 
who knows when we're going to get back to get back to normal and we may never get back to normal and if I got to sit on my sofa and knit for the next however many years I'm okay with that that sounds great to me <laughs> there's literally nothing in the world that I need because I can buy all the yarn I want online <laughs> so I'm good I'm good did I tell you we got <laughs> we got have you seen like on Instagram I don't know where else but Instagram is where I saw it. what about bunny and Stella the the dogs that use the buttons to talk they press the buttons to talk okay well we got those for the dogs and like literally they're too excited to use them so like rippy yesterday hit the button like four times when i asked her to like four times around when i pointed to it and said press the button and she pressed it the lola is scared to death of the when the noise when you touch it because it sounds like a clicker which is great for the big dogs because they're clicker trained so they hear the click and they're like "Ooh, treat you know they're like yay she hates the sound of the clicker and deckard is the dumbest dog and he doesn't understand anything so you come over and he just tries to give you his paw no matter what you're doing he wants to give you his paw like that's the only trick he knows he knows a lot of tricks that's like the only thing he does so he's like just give me the cookie. Just give me the cookie. Just give me a cookie. Like, because he just wants a cookie. He doesn't care. He's like, whatever I have to do to, to give me a cookie. But he's really dumb. I think dumb dogs are the sweetest dogs. And Rippy, she's so smart. I think that's why she has anxiety. Anyway, I'm leaving because I need to shut up uh, and get out of here. So, all right, everybody. I am, uh, I'm leaving. I'm leaving for the last time. Happy New Year. Take care of yourselves. I will see you next week for Die Project. Goodbye.